live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to SiliconANGLE Media's production of VMworld 2017. This is theCUBE. I'm your host, Stu Miniman. Happy to be joined for this special segment, calling it the independent wrap analysis, multi-hybrid uh, focus with Blue Cow. Uh, Blue Cow is here, first time guest on the program, and Blue Cow's brought a, f a, few, of, uh, a few of the friends. Uh, friends of mine, uh, people that I got to know through this phenomenal VMware community, uh, also guest hosts on the program here. Uh, been a pleasure working with all three of you. Uh, John Troyer uh, from Tech Reckoning, uh, Justin Warren uh, from Pivot9, and Keith Townsend, the CTO <laughs> advisor. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for coming here. Um, now, you know, we're independent, you know, when we come to this, and I don't think any of us are shy uh, as, as to kind of sharing our opinions. Uh, I think all of us have said, you know, I can't believe what you said on Twitter at least once. <laughs> Heck, I remember when John Troyer was working for VMware, I did get a call, you know, every once in a while. I said, if I didn't get a call at least once a year from him saying, hey Stu, can you, you know, like moderate that a little? I'm probably not doing my job. So let's, let's get into it. Uh, the first thing I'd say, you know, it's 2017. We blinked and like we're getting towards the end of it. Of course, there's the big party. There's still a whole bunch of sessions going for another day. Um, but you know, let's reactions on the show, high level things. Keith, well, let's start down with you. So first off, the energy of the show this year was, I have to say it was up a notch. You know, there was a lot of uncertainty around the acquisition and even Pat's future, whether or not he would be here for the VMworld this year as the head of VMware. Mm -hmm. He announced, I think it was kind of like with a little bit of pride that he said, this is my fifth year as CEO of VMware and he bought the energy Monday and I think that energy has, uh, I think, transferred throughout all of the VMware staff and throughout the show for the past few days. All right, just, Justin, and the, that, that question of course, and mm -hmm. how many selfies has Blue Cow done at the show? Not as many as usual, unfortunately, because we've been very, very busy with briefings and meetings, so we haven't had as much selfie time as we have, but we still make time to, to take a few, few photos around the show. And yeah, I agree with Keith, the energy this year, uh, and I think it has started with, with what the example that Pat set, uh, at the first keynote, which it's just been lifted this year. And I've been, been saying for, I've been hearing it from a lot of different people and I've been having it in conversations as well that this year VMware stopped apologizing for existing and it's embraced itself. And I'm sure that having the stock price hit a nice, nice high of 107, I'm sure that helped with Pat and, and his idea of, you know, that makes you happy, makes it a lot easier to keep your job. Yeah, that's great. There, there was a comment actually, it's, it, the, the first time most of us remember the week of VMworld, the stock actually was going up. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, John, you know, you've got lots of experience with this community, your take. Certainly uh, more energy than last year. I mean, let's look at the micro and the macro. There's, uh, there's always tactical stuff going on. Last year, uh, vSphere 6.5 had not been released, uh, Dell acquisition, uh, and uh, nobody, nobody was sure what was going on exactly. Mm. This year, the big, a the big uh, VMware Cloud on AWS announcement, I think, is an acknowledgement maybe, we can talk about, we'll talk about that, that, that wait a minute, the, once you get down to like the nitty gritty plumbing infrastructure layer, you still need to partner with somebody like, like VMware. Yep. I think the, the industry and the analysts and the, the market, like that's one of the things they like. And then look at the macro trends on the economy. If you look at the expo floor this year, huge. Lots of money being spent, lots of vendors here. Uh, there's something macro going on as well with, uh, with, the, you know, with the people here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Let's talk about you know the two things I look at like, did VMware meet expectations? Was it what you expect? And what are we going to be looking back at when we come here, John? You know, I'll start with you. You you hit on you know the big topic we were get, you know from my standpoint looking at VMware and AWS. Um, you know, what will VMware look like in the future? Are they going to be a SaaS provider? I mean, how do, how does that transition from you know a infrastructure software company to you know? different fit for how they do cloud today versus you know, the whole vCloud error and everything before it. Uh, that was era, not error, yeah. even though, uh, yeah. The vCloud era. <laughs> hey, uh, they had a lot to do uh, of messaging and, and a lot of product announcements and a lot of uh, introductions this week. I don't know, I, let's give them a B for that because there were a lot of them and they had a lot to do in a short space, especially like through the lens of say the keynotes, which is what the, the lens a lot of people have. Mm. Uh, you know, they, I think AWS, VMware Cloud on AWS is the big story. I don't know, I predict that uh, in a year or two, VMware will probably be the biggest VMware hoster 
uh, on a yeah, service provider, right? The, a lot of, I think a lot of workloads are going to shift over into the AWS uh, service through VMware, and that'll, that'll happen uh, through excess capacity, it'll happen through a lot of different things. But I, I, that's my prediction. Uh, I'm sorry, you say VMware will? VMware will be the largest VMware hoster within a year or two. All right, I, I feel like I'm watching the NFL Network. Bold predictions, here we have it. VMware's got 4,500 partners, John. I have Ajay Patel on a couple of times talking about his, you know, his tiers of partners and everything like that. Yeah. But let, yeah. let, let's let some of the guys you know, weigh in. Yeah, I think I'll think i extend on that. I, think I kind of agree. I think that there's a lot of customers who will just do a, basically a lift and shift and use cloud. And I think having, having to choose between which of their children is the most beautiful um, and which one they love more has been really tearing them apart. And I think that now that they don't have to make that choice, I think they're going to be a lot easier for, the, for particularly CIOs to just say, yep, I am doing some cloud. Um, the announcement on Tuesday, I think, sort of fell a little flat for me because they were talking about Google, uh, uh, Google Container Services, which is running on Pivotal. Um, now, Pivotal is sort of an underappreciated part of the whole portfolio, I think. There's a lot of companies doing some really interesting software development work there. But as we mentioned, the, the developer community, that's not this community. This is much more about infrastructure people. So that kind of whole announcement and what they were talking about on day two just kind of went fell a little bit off for me. Yeah, I want to echo I think a couple of statements that you've made. One, that VMware seemed to embrace, Monday, they seemed to embrace being VMware. Yep. You know what, we may pick on the concept of VMware vSphere being cloud. That, that, you know, and VMware is very proud of calling their SDDC strategy, which is a important strategy. and adds a lot of value to not just legacy IT, but current things that people are doing in their data center and they embraced being what they do well on Monday, and then we had Cloud Pizza on Tuesday, which kind of broke that, but I think, uh, I, I, I think I love the message for VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation, this concept, this reference architecture, this validated design that I can run in my data center. I know that at a rack space, at a, uh, CNF such as, uh, you take your switch, pip, uh, uh, take your choice between Switch and CenturyLink, et cetera, that I'm going to get that consistent OpenStack, what, what should have been OpenStack, filling yep. across cloud providers. But John, I agree with you, AWS is AWS at the end of the day, and it's an easy checkbox to say, VMware uh, Cloud on AWS, really easy to do and it's easy to consume. I don't have to go and choose between cloud providers. Yeah. All right. Um, one of the things that this show is there's never enough hours in the day, uh, even Vegas, you know, I, I actually have to admit, I, I got to bed at a reasonable hour every night. Uh, we still have one more night for me here, so, so we'll see on that. Uh, hallway conversations, parties, uh, some of the really cool stuff, the show floor we, we, we talked about, about a little. Um, I'll start off with kind of, from a customer standpoint, um, some customers I talked to, a number of them seem to be, you know, I want to move faster, I, I, I'm interested in trying new things, uh, and price isn't necessarily number one on my list, it's, it's further down the list, mm -hmm. which reminds me, it's not quite yet, there yet, but I go to Amazon reInvent, and this will be the fifth year we're doing theCUBE at that show. That's the thing that really excites me when there's cool new things we're trying, so, I, I echo and agree with a lot of what you, you all said about day two. Most of the customers here aren't ready for PKS. Sure, Pivotal has lots of customers that are using VMware, but the, the average attendee's not there. So kind of a wild card, customer insights, you know, cool parties, uh, th things there. Uh, John, we want to start down your end? Sure, uh, my channel check, uh, and the most surprising thing that I saw this week were talking to SEs from VMware, and saying that their customers were coming to them and asking, how, help, I, have, I now have Kubernetes in the house, <laughs> what do I do with it? Um, and so that surprised me. I have been a Kubernetes and container advocate, but a skeptic as far as adoption. And at least anecdotally, the folks that I talk to, it sounds like actually it's now trickling its way and kind of to the mainstream to where the VMware accounts are going to be able to have to deal with it. Now I will say on the flip side, Stu, uh, if you look out at the show floor, there are no developer tools, DevOps tools, cloud tools, maybe some cloud tools. That side of the, that AWS side of the house, the people that are there, those companies that are there, were not here. So if you're if you were a customer, if you were an IT person, looking to like this year finally to educate yourself on how to do that, that wasn't here at this show. Yeah, I for me the, the it's been about 
migration. This is about we have a whole bunch of stuff which is running on VMware, it's already there, and that was one of the reasons VMware was, po was popular in the first place, was that you could take stuff that you were already doing and you could virtualize it and then you could increase the, cap the capacity utilization that you have and you could get some more efficiencies out of that. And then people started to layer additional services on top of that and to do interesting and new things on that. It allowed them to do that because they kind of freed up some, some time. I think we're going to see that again as, as things start to move to the cloud and people start to do them in different ways. The workloads will migrate. It's not just going to happen tomorrow. And some of the things that we've seen, one of the things that impressed me about the show uh, was uh, a company called Densify, who had been around previously. They were called Cerber, and they did a complete rebrand and reposition and nailed it. And it's a very, very simple tool that actually sells about the business. It's not about the technology. They don't actually talk about how the thing works or what's going on underneath it, but it allows you to understand the effect of what's happening if you move from VMware here over to that cloud, this cloud, or the other cloud. And it, it shows you the pricing. You can, can I, I looked at that and it's went, I could walk into a CFO and I can sell them on the idea just showing them this. And uh, that kind of experience, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of that as people move to the cloud. So, Mundy gave me a new catchphrase for VMworld. VMware moves at the speed of the CIO. And you know what, it, with hallway conversations, I still talk to, I, I, John, I, I don't remember, it's like one third of the attendees of VMworld all first time attendees, so I talk to a lot of first time attendees, and it's amazing, because VMware has an enormous sales team, and they're very aggressive getting to accounts and talking about the overall message. I, I had people coming up to me and saying, man, you know what, I just found out about this vRealize log insight. And it's amazing. Mm. And I'm thinking, wow, it doesn't get much more traditional IT than log management and, and uh, what we realize, you know, VMware has preached that for the past five, six years yeah. at the show. So I think it just shows the, the delta in the, in the community from yeah. those looking to do the developer and DevOps and cloud native integration. Us as analysts pushing VMware saying, hey, what's your digital transformation story? It's something other than then cloud pizza to all the way to the, uh, you know, keeping the lights on with SAP and Oracle apps that will not change and haven't changed and probably won't change for the next 10, 15 years. Yeah. Yeah, um, and actually it br brings up an interesting point. Uh, I had a conversation with Pumala this mo morning uh, and we were talking about how, it used to be, come to the show, and it's, it's the virtualization show. Um, now it's a pretty broad ecosystem. Uh, and in some ways it's, it, you know, I wouldn't say fragmented, but I'm, I'm grasping for, for a better word because you walk through the show floor and, you know, Dentify, interesting, we had uh, one of their co-founders on as to, you know, that, that kind of, you know, the cloud management, how all those pieces, you know, it's these big hairy issues that people are solving. You know, we've got people working at analytics and data, you've got, uh, you know, all, all the cloud pieces, security all over the place, networking, we've always had storage uh, at, at this show. Um, but I've been a little jaded coming to VMworld. It's now my eighth year. I've kind of re-energized re re it this year. Mm -hmm. I know some people have stopped coming. There's a new influx of coming in. Um, let's, let's you know, fast forward to VMworld 2018. You know, what are you hoping to see from this ecosystem? Any final things you'd want to say, you know, hey, this is what we can do better, or this thing, do it absolutely again? Especially we've got one more year in Vegas, then I think we'll probably go back to, to San Francisco. So, you know, you've all been uh, to, to many of these. You know, wh wh where, do we, where do we start? I got, can I, I'll take two. One is I'd like to see more basketball players and rappers. Uh, you know, <laughs> we had a lot did of Did you hang with KD? <laughs> I, I, I did not, I was busy, he called, his people called my people. Um, and that's, I don't know if you want to tee that one up, what that, yeah, that but one You is. can yeah. mention that, absolutely. Sure, I mean, uh, Rubrik uh, was here, but winner of the best of show yep. of the uh, VMworld. Uh, also spent a lot of marketing dollars on uh, uh, Kevin Durant, who was also an investor, and, uh, and also uh, handsome, they, they, nice they, they make cards, uh, you know, it's like, look, cards. I'm on a trading card. How hilarious trading is that? Trading cards are cool. Yeah. I have one. Yeah, I, yeah. I did. Absolutely. They came to play, man, and they and so and they brought it this this year. So marketing dollars spent. I actually have a second prediction, which is that next year or the year after, we'll be talking about. It seemed like VMware and Red Hat are throwing down against each other. So I think next year we might be talking about the the Dell Technologies Red Hat wars. 
in the cloud. Oh, open source comes up. It hadn't been discussed much, except we did some Red Hat, you know, interviews here. Red Hat, absolutely hybrid, okay, you know, cloud environment. You know, Microsoft, VMware, you know, uh, and in uh, Red Hat, uh, you know, all, all all players there. So uh, yeah, J J J John's been John's been thinking about this this wrap for a while. I know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to switch completely differently and, and look into the future of what I'd like to see, just to, yeah, you know, yeah. break, just to shake it up a little bit. I, I don't think that we should be talking about AWS type things around containers. I think there will be some of that conversation. But what I want to see is the VMware start hosting a function service. I want to see functions on VMware because I reckon that's where the industry is going to move to in serverless, the long term. Serverless, you're saying? Yeah, serverless. Hey, it got mentioned on day two. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see, I want to see a, a functions as a service on VMware on AWS. Oh, that'll There happen. you go, product management, that's what you can well, go you build. Could already, you could tie it into Lambda right now, right? You'll have your... your, your yeah, but if you tie it into Lambda, that just we'll, plays we'll, right we'll into AWS's pivotal, hands. Give yeah. Chris Wall, uh, uh, Wolf a call, and uh, you, you make know, it like, happen. Kit Colbert will make that happen. Yeah. 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 So, you know what? Full disclosure, I was part of uh, judging for best of VMworld, and you know, uh. Rubrik won best of VMworld. I don't want to see more data protection. I don't want to see more secondary storage. I think one of the driving uh, elements that are part of that discussion, mm -hmm. uh, pulling back the onion a little bit, was about redefining something in the data center that had been forgotten. That mm -hmm. API level access, you know, Rubrik pushes API level access to the data center. This is uh, something that I've asked from VMware forever, which is to basically be the API to my data center. You may not ever, I may never get function as a service, I may never get pass, I may never get all these cool things from a developer perspective that I want from VMware, but at the very minimum, you're the software defined data center, I want to have APIs into the data center. And that data center is not just my physical data center, but this whole uh, VCF thing that's pushed, whether it's uh, in my data center, in Rackspace, or some other VCAM partner, or in AWS, my interface from a infrastructure, if infrastructure is going to continue to be VMware's customer, then you should enable me from a API perspective to manage my software-defined data center, believe it or not. Yep. All right. Um, unfortunately, you know, I, I, I love to ch chat with these gentlemen for hours at a time if I can. We're limited. With theCUBE, we only give you a taste of what's happening at these shows. If I mentioned before, you need to come to these kind of events yeah. to talk to these quality people. We also mentioned a few of the sponsors on the show. Sponsorship helps us bring not only theCUBE to the event, but helps me bring high quality, independent analysis from gentlemen li li like this. So please check out all of our sponsors. Check out all of our content on theCUBE.net. These, uh, all three of them, creating a lot of content. It, go to their Twitter handle, CTO Advisor, JP Warren, and Jay Troyer. I'm at Stu. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us for our coverage of VMworld 20. Steve, reach out to all of us. We're, we really will get back to you. Love to hear your feedback. And thank you so much for, so thank you so much for watching theCUBE.